Hello and welcome to the Wednesday Night Modeling Stream. I'm your streamer, Brian Bentley. Uh, welcome to CG Spectrum's Modeling Stream. <laughs> uh, it's Wednesday night, morning, evening, what have you. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep working on this. Uh, what have we been working on? We've been working on this bad boy, this uh, this um, uh, environment that is just quickly spiraling, spiraling out of control. But I'm having a really good time. So, uh, if you haven't watched a couple streams, I've been working on this for about, uh, once again, I literally do no work on these things between the streams. So, we, uh, I, so, we, uh, I pretty much pick up where, <laughs> off last, I'm a very busy guy, I got a lot of gigs, you know, this, that, and the other, but I love my Wednesday night modeling stream, because as I always say, it gives me two uninterrupted hours to just sit and work. Oh, it's so beautiful. I, I love it. I love it. It, um... It's a very rare thing. It's a very rare thing where you actually get two hours to just sit and and work. Um, I don't play video games. I don't really watch movies. I watch TV when I can. Um, but just getting it, getting, being able to just sit down and just work is... Oh, it's ah, chef kiss. All right. So... Uh, where were we uh, last time? So I was working on shaders for all this stuff, and specifically building very custom shaders. Now, um, this is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Houdini gets a little bit of getting used to. You know, like when you work in Houdini, there's all these little pockets that that you can specialize in. You can specialize in geometry. You can specialize in in, in uh, simulation, you can specialize in particles and or pyro and smoke and dust and rigid bodies and it's this huge program. And uh, I always say that that you eat the food that's in front of you. Uh, so I have never really had to deal with shaders and I wanted to learn to deal with shaders. So you're gonna come along on this in, uh, on this journey with me. I also saw that there wasn't a lot of information about this. There's like one master class for Houdini 16 and doesn't really have nothing really. Uh, seems to have changed as far as the shading um, since then, um, but it's really fast. It's about an hour long, and it, they kind of skip over some stuff and um, don't really explain a lot of things. So I figured, why not just jump in and get your feet uh, dirty or your hands dirty or whatever you want to call it, and uh, and try to figure this stuff out. And it's been pretty cool. I've learned a whole bunch. Like I already knew about like shading, but like learned about how Houdini treats a lot of its uh, a lot of its infrastructure. So. With that in mind, uh, I have my, my UI split up like this. So here's my scene view. Uh, I have a doo -doo -doo, I have a camera here. So that's my, my camera. Uh, and let's see. There we go. There's my camera. I have a daylight scene in here. I have some trees uh, uh, instanced in here that we built with the tree generator a couple weeks ago. So should be a pretty good time. All right. So let's uh, let's just get a baseline, and we'll run. I'm gonna render from my shot cam, and we'll go ahead and make sure my mantra is set to uh, let's see one. Let's do one quarter resolution, and uh, let's check physically based rendering. Yes, sampling three and three is fine. Uh, I'll deal with all this. Uh, when we get to our final output. Probably not this week, probably not next week, maybe the week after. Uh, and then I'm also going to split um, split this guy, left and right, split this guy, left and right. And I'm gonna say, all right, you, I'm right clicking, you are matched with you and are matched with you. And then you is gonna be two and you is gonna be two here. So these two panels will always hook together and then these three panels here will hook together. I'll also even maybe hook uh, this one to one. So all this, so what I want, so what that allows me to do is I can go into my shading context and then these guys will be hooked together and these guys will be hooked together. Lots of information. Lots of information DC. Okay, so, um, and actually, uh, I'm kind of cognizant of what my, let's see if I can I will scoot because I'm realizing that my uh, my little window here is blocking a lot of the view. So maybe 
Maybe if I scoot this over just a little bit. So less real estate for me, but easier to see for, for you guys. Actually, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll just leave it full screen. If I see anything pertinent, I'll just kind of try to keep in mind that there's this like little chunk missing there. Okay, so uh, let's do a render real quick. See what we get. Let's see where we left off at. Make sure I don't have any errors or anything like that uh, that crept up while I was doing some, uh, you know, troubleshooting. And that's what I'll do. I'll just keep this kind of like down here. Okay, so there's our scene. Why is this rendering upside down? That's weird. Let's see, view bar. Stop. Ooh, Dini seems to not like my, uh, my, uh, let's, let's kill this render view. We'll make another one. Uh, window, new floating panel. And I'll make this a render view. Render view. There we This is still rendering upside down. It's weird. There must, there's got to be some view that I have uh, set up here that is not working correctly. I think my, also my uh, my my uh, uh, my uh, recording software is is messing with uh, with my overlays because I can't get to like as soon as I right click here, it's it's going away. So uh, we may just have to work upside down today. That's one of the things that happens. Uh, it's weird. That, that's that's rendering upside down. Let's do home. There we go. That was weird. Uh, so just press the H button to home this out. Uh, I'm gonna hold down Shift to shade around where this little face is. Let this resolve a little bit. Sure, growing on top of my uh, on top of my my little stone head here so i want it on the top of these stones and on the top of the head where this thing is facing facing upwards so um actually what i'll do here i have so little real estate going on right now i can take this and just dock it there we go okay so i'll just flop back and forth between here and here, yeah, that looks better. So you're losing a little bit of this chunk right here, but uh, I'll try to keep it on this side. Okay, so uh, so if I take, so right now in my my head, so you can have your materials in two different spots. You can have it on the object level, or you can have it on the in the in the sop level. So right now I have this in the sop level. Now there's there's pros and cons to doing it either way. Right now this really isn't giving me much. You know, I'm only applying this material to the to the whole thing. I'm applying it right at the end. Um, this material is well. The material node allows you to apply different materials to different chunks of your model. But because I am, you know, I'm I'm just applying it here at the end. It's probably better for me to do it at the object level. So, in this case, I'm just going to disable. I'm going to do this for my standing stones as well. So here we have this material let right at the bottom. So I'm going to disable that. And uh, what I can do is I can just take this and I'm gonna take my stone material here. I'm just gonna drag it up into that material. And my standing stones, I'm gonna drag that up into that material. Okay, so just make sure this is working. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do another quick render. Okay, cool, that's working. Uh, the other thing this allows me to do is I can take um, just my straight up materials and I can just drag them, I should be able to just drag them straight into, yeah, so I can just drag them straight onto, onto these objects. So this is my, my, uh, my little moss material. Um, I think maybe, maybe the displacement is a little bit too high overall for moss. Uh, and I think for, for something this big, though that moss texture should be a little bit more uh, uh, smaller. Like it feels like this feels really small because those bumps are really big. That's like big undulating pieces of moss. But we'll deal with that later. Uh, right now, what I need is I need layer exports. So I need to make sure my layer exports work. So I'm going to stop this. So the layer export is something rather technical. So if uh, don't let this uh, this uh, or do let this graph scare you. Uh, it's not very scary. If you go back to the older um, if you go back to the older uh, uh, streams, then you know, you, I built all this from pretty much from nothing. So I need to export two sets of layer information. I need it export from this PDR reflect like this last thing but that goes into my surface exports and I need to export from my displacement here okay so the way I do this is and I was right the last time I just couldn't figure out how to do it uh, I need to set up a parameter node very very specifically so I'm gonna set up a so hopefully I can get this to work I need to set up a parameter I'm gonna call that parameter layer I can call it anything um, I thought you had to call it layer but uh, I can call it anything I want and I'm going to set this as a struct. So what a struct is, is it's a collection of information. So the struct is, so we're gonna call this uh, default, this is gonna be a shader layer, okay? So it's a struct. So we can see that there's all bunch of different types of structs. There's a PXR manifold, so that's for uh, RenderMan. Um, this dual rest that's for I think that's for fluids PXR layer that's for render man dual rest also for uh, also for uh, for uh, fluids fuzzy set I think that's for crowds I would think shader exports all this other stuff so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this is a shader layer okay and I always want this thing to say uh, Export in its own context. So what that ever said, what that says is whatever I have hooked up to this thing, export in that context, and that's really important. Um, and then my export, I'm going to say always, and I want to export as my surface. So for the surface, my layer, and plug it into there, and bang, it'll export. So if I go back out to my material, I should have. Right. Oh, hey John, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, pirate talk day apparently <laughs> it is so I have my layer there so the tricky part of this is this is just taking um, taking in kind of this area up here so it's just my color my surface it's not taking into account my displacement so I need another one of these to build my displacement so to do that temporarily I'm gonna disconnect I'm gonna just uh, what's the word uh, disable this and I'm gonna hold on alt and I'm just gonna make a copy of this And I'm going to enable that one. And I'm going to hold down Y, cut that that wire. Now, for this one, I want this to be not a surface struct, but I want it to be a displacement struct. So make sure you get rid of this surface here. Okay. So I have, it's also called layer. So because the export, so these two things go together. Use own export contents, context, export context. So those two things go together. I feel like once this is turned on, like you should, yeah, it should, it's just one of the things you have to do. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons why people don't build their own stuff because it's so fiddly. But like I said, I really like to know, like this is almost, this is an academic exercise in like how, how the internals of this work. Okay. So that's a display. So with that, so this is what I, what really cues me. I was like, okay, up here, I have this layer, right? That I can that I can export down here like there's no layer there's no like layer information so what I need to do is I need to build a layer 
right? So I need to take this out P and out N, and I need to pack that into 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 a layer. So that is called a. Uh, I'm just going to type in layer. Uh, it's called a layer. Uh, layer pack. No, it's called a. Uh, I think I'm running okay. It says I'm running at 63. Am I still frozen? on restream okay well if I'm still frozen then uh, I'll just kind of keep going so uh, I need to make a layer uh, let's see that would be a layer set layer export no oh god I just built this uh, da, 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 da. that would be a what was it called Set layer component. What was it? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, let me actually, I built this already, um, and I don't know why. I'm like, I have like the memory of a goldfish when I do these. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, layer. Let's see if I can remember it. Oh, layer. Ah, I'll just have to look it up. So, give me a second. I'm just going to pop open a troubleshooting version of Houdini. It's a way of always good to Martha Stewart things. I Martha Stewart did some stuff together. So, let me pop this open real quick. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, is it a layer pack? I think it's a layer pack. Let me look. One second. Cancel. I'm just opening my notes on uh, on another machine here. Cheating. Cheating, you could call it. Uh, so basically the idea is that I need to take this out in and out P and convert it into a layer and plug it into there. So let's see. What is that node called? So hopefully I will never have to remember how to do this. Uh, layer pack. Yeah, layer pack. I was right. Yeah, layer. Layer pack. There we go. Okay, good. Close that. Let's go. So layer pack. So... The thing that's that's uh, that's confusing about this is there's this F to C, but there's a P and there's an N and there's a layer out. So I have a P here, so that gets plugged into there, and I have an N there, and that gets plugged into there. So not C E, that should go into P. Cool. So what this does is it packs this together into a little uh, into a little structure or struct as as Houdini calls it, and then I can take layer and that goes out into layer. So layer pack into parameter. This is super confusing and it's not well documented at all. So layer pack into parameter. Layer pack into parameter. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. Thank you for that vote of confidence working smart. Okay, so I need to make sure I turn this guy back on. Now, the reason I disabled this is if I duplicate this as it is without it disabled, it will it will basically break both of them because they're like they're basically doing this right it's like you can't export two of the same type of stuff so that's how I got around doing that so what I'm gonna do is I have that other material 
And this is what I love about node based stuff. So I'm control C and then I'm gonna come down to my moss and just over here control. Now eventually I want to turn this into a, and because they're exactly the same, everything gets hooked up. Um, eventually I wanna turn this into a DSA where I won't have to copy and paste between, but I just wanna make sure this stuff's working. Okay, now. Okay, so let's see what happens if, so now I can take this layer, so I have this layer, I'm gonna plug in the A and this layer and plug in B and I'm gonna take uh, my head here and I'm gonna take this layer mix and put that there. So there is one problem that I think I'm going to run into and we'll see if that happens and if, if it does, then we'll see, uh, we'll see that in action. And we'll see how to, to optimize and uh, work with that. So this is generating, generating my scene. Okay, yeah, so this is this is doing exactly what I think it's doing, what it was gonna do. Okay, for, so for whatever reason, uh, in this setup, do this setup, I get this. It's like Mantra is unable to load texture H, te tiff, 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 right? Um, so I, I, I've been, I, I did do a teensy bit of work in between streams. I lied at the beginning. I actually forgot I did this already. So I went and looked online. Now, anytime you get stuff like this, and you're kind of unsure. I have so many students. Uh, oh, DSA or HDA. Sorry, HDA, not DSA. Uh, I'm like conflating TSA and HDA. And HDA is a Houdini digital asset, right? So when you make, uh, so if you go, I think um, maybe like six weeks ago, I did the uh, the Buddha statue, and I basically made an HDA. Uh, a, a, a geometry level HDA, which would take and put bricks on uh, on a really high resolution uh, piece of geometry. Um, you can make HDAs that are also shaders. You can make HDAs that are you know uh, uh, simulation setups. You can basically it's just basically taking a bunch of nodes and packing them together and making it so you can version it and use it over and over and over again. So right now, so I'm having a double. I, I'm having to pace between this material and this material. If these were both the same HDA, then whatever I did to this one would propagate out to all of them. And this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, I think the closest thing you have to something like this in Maya is like referencing. Like if you're referencing something over and over and over again. Uh, I think they do have some sort of assets, but nothing, nothing that's powerful. Uh, yes, I did just drag a node into the path drop down and made it wrote yeah, and it did write the path out. You can do that for anything in Houdini. Like if uh, if you see like this little kind of give me a node button, you can just drag stuff into there, right? So if I like for example, like if I go to uh, let's see, if I go to Mantra, and if I go to where is it? Yeah, if I go to objects, so I can say, if I only want to render just this head, right, I can take uh, just my head and put that in candidate objects, and now just that head will render. Or if I want just my standing stones, I can drag that into just that, and then just my standing stones render. Or I can just do star, and it basically says render everything that's, that's visible. So that's a little nice little trick that you can do. Um... Cool, awesome. So, uh, do do do. So I uh, back to God. I'm stuttering a lot today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so it says Mantra is unable to load texture. You know, smooth clip. Blah blah blah. Dot tip. And I don't know why <laughs> it can load the moss. Dot tiff. Um, and it won't load the smooth. Uh, the smooth cliff dot tiff. I don't know. Maybe they're compressing. These are kind of the things that, that that you have to deal with when you pull stuff offline, even from kind of like a, a curated site like uh, textures.com. You don't really know how that image was created. Um, so maybe they compressed this one differently. Maybe it's got some sort of different uh, different differentness to it. So I went and looked online, and where was I? Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, I have students that they they'll run into something like this. And then they'll just freeze, right? Uh, and they'll just, you know, be like, I, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm just not going to go do anything. Go online. Like, the entirety of human knowledge is online. Uh, 
Hey, Hardik, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, go Google it. Like, if you're having a problem, like, someone else is probably having this problem, right? Because this, these 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 softwares are mass-produced. They're mass-distributed. You don't have, like, a special version. Uh, so if you're having this problem, somebody else is having this problem. And so the main uh, way that I saw to fix this is to convert these textures into a format that, that Houdini really likes. So Houdini has its own image formats, .pick and .rat. Um, if you if you look at any of the, like those the pre-built uh, pre-built um, materials like the metal grate that you always see all the time or the brick or, or uh, I'm doing good thank you for asking it's been a it's been a weird been a weird week I've been I've been working way too hard uh, so if you look at the uh, the metal grate or the <coughs> um, or the uh, brick texture that ships with Houdini, those are all .rat files. So it's like, okay, I'll just convert those to .rat. So let's go and um, let's just replace these with, and I already, I've already done this, so I'm gonna say dot. <coughs> oh really, you get that error. Um, so I'm gonna say .rat. So I should stop this rendering. <coughs> Excuse me. Throat. Yeah, if you get error codes, Google them, man. Somebody else has probably got that same code. And if you haven't, then you're special and maybe cursed. <laughs> and then you just have to, you got to go to tech support. Okay, let's see if Fingers crossed if we can get this, if that'll load now. I don't know why I'm coughing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now it looks like it's complaining about the moss texture. So let me go ahead and let me just make sure my stone texture is working. So, oop. Okay, so the rat stone textures are working. So I didn't convert the moss, but apparently I'm going to have to. Because now it's complaining about the, the moss texture. So in my layer mix, if I go all the way to one, I should just get just stone. Or actually, just moss. If I go all the way to the other side, I should get just stone. Okay. So there's stone. And so I, I'm not really sure why. Like, on their own, they work fine. Did I change the wrong one? I did change the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's close this. Let's stop this. I changed the wrong one. So these need to go back to TIFF. Let's make sure. Moss. Natural moss. Yeah, T-I-F. So let's say TIFF. Um, Maya Hypershade and Houdini Hypershade, yeah, I mean, whenever you get to rendering every, everything kind of beyond a render, uh, everything uh, is a little different. Every software, it's like languages. Uh, Spanish works a little bit different from Portuguese. Russian works a little bit different from this, right? So, uh, let's say rat. And I don't know what rat stands for. I, I really should look up what rat stands for. Okay, so let's plug the stone material in here. And doing this like live is super nerve wracking because generally I would just be like, ah, whatever, it's, it's, I'll, I'll figure it out and as I go along. Uh, but you know, okay, cool, all right, awesome. So that stuff, that's working now. So it's a little bit dark and I have that, I know I have a, uh, a gamma correction 
uh, guy in there. So that's why that's so dark, but it's it's working. So let's take that layer mix and plug that back in. And let's see if I get that error again. Okay, awesome. So my moss is working. And if I go back to zero, great, my, my texture is working. Sweet. So uh, now uh, I think what all I need to do is, let's see, I think I had a gamma correction between my color correct. Let's just disable that and see what happens. So let's correct this up to 2.2. And the other thing, it looks like my displacement might need a correction as well. So to see what these, these rat file looks like, what they, what they actually look like, is uh, I can go and I'm going to open mplay. So mplay is oh thanks Hardik. Uh, so mplay. So it looks like my uh, my my displacement is so in 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 converting those I probably changed the color space a little bit. So uh, I probably brought uh, this guy. So let's see. Let's bring yeah. So I probably brought this guy down. So I probably also brought my displacement down a lot. So let's look at that. So that's my height. Like, I feel like if you, any of you ever are old enough to remember Malcolm in the middle, there's like that one part where Hal is trying to fix like a light bulb and then he goes to the drawer and then the drawer is broken and then he goes to like fix the drawer and he's, he's out of oil and then he goes to try to start his car and his car is broken. Like, this can happen in computer graphics, right? You fix one thing, and then you need to fix another thing, and then you need to fix another thing, and then fix another thing. But along the lines, especially with stuff like this, you learn so much. I have learned more from doing stuff like this where it doesn't work, and I have to go dig and find new stuff and try new things than when everything runs smoothly. Because when everything runs smoothly, like, it's great, and you get a product, but you don't really learn anything. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to open mPlay. And I think I can actually do that from here. Let's see. I usually just open it from my command line, but you can do it from up. Uh, in play. Load disk files. There we go. So render, in play, load disk files. So what in play is, is it's just another, it's, a, it's basically... Uh, it's Houdini's uh, image viewer, okay? Uh, so it's a, it's a wholly separate software, piece of software. So I'm gonna go, let's go to hip. And let's go to, let's go grab. Let's see. Dropbox. CG Spectrum. Projects, stream, foliage demo. And I'm gonna go grab that uh, smooth cliff load. Okay, so that is my smooth cliff dot rat. And let's look at um, let's look at my dot tiff. So file open tiff. So they look pretty much the same. Okay, so so let's actually take. Uh, Take this and effect scale. So 
I have offset and effect scale. seeing offset here. Layer. Let's just do let's pop this guy out. And we'll call this displacement offset. Actually, you know what? I'll just clear that. And so now my offset, I'm going to set that to, let's put it to zero. I think I'll leave it at this. Uh, my offset is negative 0.5. Oh, that's the other thing. When you're working with displacement, uh, if you change stuff, always stop your render. Because a lot of times, some of the stuff that you do with your displacement won't show up. You have to do like a whole reset. Oh, I'm also, once again, I'm working in Moss Map. I need to be here. So let's take this offset. Let's stop. Keep on working in the wrong one. So it's offset. And we'll set that to zero because it looks like he's crumpling inwards a little bit. It kind of adds to the, the broken look, but. I don't want happy accidents. I want this to, uh, I want this to do exactly what I'm telling it to do. If I want it to look crumpled, I'm gonna make it look crumpled. I don't want it to look crumpled. Okay, so that's making him look bloated. Negative point. Okay, so it's probably a. So if I'm at, if if zero is making him look bloated, right? Uh, then my my values are too high overall. Uh, if this is making him look crumpled, so uh, and this is how you do like a little bit of detect digital detective work, right? So if if this is your surface and you have a uh, you have a displacement map, and let's say um, your displacement map is at so it's a deep I got it off the internet so it goes from zero to one so at 0 0.5 0 0.5 should be the middle so that's what this offset is doing it's taking everything and it's saying all right subtract everything by 0 0.5 so here is 0 0.5 of that image one is here and uh, zero is here so if things go down to zero they press in if they go up they they press up so so that's ideal case so if I set that to zero now zero is here 0 0.5 is here one is here so that's why everything looks bloated like that so what I need to do is I need to set this back down to zero to one but my zero to one is probably skewed right because of color spaces. So it's probably something like more like this, like my zeros down here, my one is here, or like this is my 0 0.5 and this is my zero here. So it's, it's pressing everything down. So I need to probably need to gamma this up by 2.2. Okay. Quick little math lesson, I think. So I'm going to go and take, I'm going to copy this color correction node because I've already gamma that up by 2.2. And we can see that my colors got really dark as well. So I'm thinking the same thing is happening with my height. So control D. So 
So I'm going to take this color correct. I'm going to copy that. And there we go. Bam. Digital detective. Bam. Look at that. Just right back to where we were before. So everything works now. So what everything, what it, what it looks like it did is uh, it gamma down everything. It linearized all of my, uh, all of my stuff. So if that's the case, I'm probably going to have to uh, do that same thing to, so I've done it to my albedo. I'm probably going to have to do it to my normal map as well. Yeah, I'm gonna probably gonna have to do this in my normal map as well. So I'm gonna say well, Control C and Control V. Plug that in there. And so what I'm doing, uh, uh, I was looking at the attribute promotes and I was wondering if the material node needed to be expanded I don't think so I don't know why that that offset uh, wasn't wasn't showing up in my parameter list um, but yeah okay cool great so now we're back to what we had before so by changing those to dot rat I just needed these these color correction nodes in here so basically what I'm doing is I'm gradually building up this tool because as far as I know there's no default way to do this kind of like triplanar uh, project projection <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed that 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 small victory, and that's what it's about. It's about the small victories. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So I have my layer exports. Um, I may just copy this and make a new moss material, but we're 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 on a pretty good uh, tick right now. So, okay. So my moss mat, um, and my yeah. Okay. So now, if I go back to my layer mix, so if I take off a uh, to zero. So there's my moss. So I'll probably have to do this for, for everything. So what I'm going to do is, do I want to copy this or do I want to just go ahead and make an HDA? Uh, let's just go ahead and make this an HDA. So I can just work on like one and, and traverse it traverse it out to, to all of them. So, uh, so let's right click and I can say create digital asset. So I'm going to save this before I do this. So I'm going to save as say 04 because I had an 03 troubleshoot And what, actually, one last thing before uh, I probably mm, no, I'll leave it at that. Uh, it's working pretty well now. So now this guy, the, my moss here, that's he's all bloated, right? He's, he's overly bloated uh, for the same reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this into an HDA. Go back to yeah, negative point five. That's why he's bloated. And the other thing I can take care of is, did I export my scale? Actually, no, I can, I can leave this out. So uh, one is moss, zero is stone, or should be stone, yeah. And then, so what I'm gonna do is, here's my little triplanar projection guy here. I'm going to plug my positive mask. So I'm gonna make sure that my uh, surface position, surface normal, my positive axis. Yeah, it's the Y axis. I'm looking at my positive axis and 
uh, I will grab my positive mask and I'll plug that into alpha. So now I should get a mixing. Yeah, there we go. I got a mixing of those two, those two uh, materials. So everything that's pointing upward on my face here is getting moss on it. So now, see if I grab all this here so now if I take my layer mix and I plug it into one of these guys as well I'm getting a little bit of moss on top yes yes super dope super dope right so now I have like this layer of kind of like dirt and moss that is that is on on these guys that's super cool so custom custom built two custom built triplanar projection shaders in the bag with a uh, with a uh, um, planar projection mix. So that's super cool. All right, so let's go ahead and let's bring back our, um, our leaves and our curves. We'll see what that looks like. Oh, that's looking dope. That's looking super dope. It's looking really nice and dirty. Like it looks, it looks like stuff is like like schmutz has just fallen on this. Like it's been out in the woods. I like that word, schmutz. Cool. All right, so uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I just want, so now that I have, I kind of have like the general idea of what everything looks like, I'm just going to pop my resolution up from one quarter to uh, half and just see what that looks like. Let's go half resolution. And so just for... Sake of time, I'm just going to do just that little section right there. Oh, that's wonderful. That's fantastic. That's really nice. I'm liking this. Okay, so I like this so much. So much that I think I want, I want like these, now that this guy looks so good, I'm patting myself on the back a little bit too much here, but uh, I'm really liking where this is going. I really like this look. Uh, these, my little rocks feel really bare now. Like they, like if something's gonna grow like this aggressively over this material, like if it's porous enough and it's holding enough, you know, it's holding enough nutrient for, for these plants to be like, oh, I wanna get on this. Maybe these plants are moisture that's that's um that is the uh uh you know that's that that the the moss is growing off of i would assume that this would also do this to to these to my my, my standing stones here so uh i'm gonna replicate uh we'll go back a little bit and you, this is how like kind of like this organic kind of design works like you generally especially when you're doing stuff on your own and you don't really, I should really be working from more more reference, but I've, I've, I went on hikes and stuff and like I should have taken pictures, but I didn't. Uh, but what I want is I want consistency. So this now, because this is so detailed and it's so overgrown and it's so pretty, like I want that same kind of look on my, on my standing stones. Um, and this is what Houdini really excels at. Uh, so I could use the exact same system, and I think I will. I'll use the same system as I used for uh for my my vine curves so let's stop this and we'll go back to my scene view and i think i use i use i ended up using shortest path for my for my curve so i had one point here uh and then i had a bunch of points up top for my vine curves so let's do that let's pop into my vine curves let's hide everything else and so what did I do? So I started with I started with the head, 
and I remeshed it and I did a group. So I grabbed, uh, let's see, I just grabbed the zeroth element of this group. So if I, that's my start. And then these guys are all my, my ends. So what I can do is actually, I'll just grow more vines off my standing stone. So I'm gonna take and duplicate this guy here. And I'll point this to my standing stones. And so I'm gonna have to change my groups up a little bit. So I have a start and I have an end. So if that's the case, all these guys are, all these guys are the same. So I could create a start and end in the actual, at the end of the actual, yeah, I'll do that. So I'm actually going to copy these two settings. Uh, so should it be specialized or generalizing? Oh, I get that question a lot and it's, it's fine. Uh, specializing or generalizing? That is kind of like the big question. Should I specialize or should I generalize? Uh, depends on what you want to do. Uh, and it kind of depends on your personal preference. Do you get bored with stuff really quick? Um, I know I do. <laughs> so I, I was a specialist for a very, very long time. And that's why I stopped being a specialist because I just did the same thing over and over and over and over again. Uh, um, so... At, at smaller companies, you can you can kind of very much thrive being a specialist because you have to do more than you know more than one thing. You have to wear a lot of hats. Like the the company I work at now, I have to do a lot of stuff. I'm doing you know environmental design. I'm doing character work. I'm doing Unity work. I'm doing uh, ZBrush work. I'm doing Unreal editing. So I'm doing all sorts of stuff. It's a very very small company. Um, when I used to work for Lucasfilm, which is possibly one of the biggest visual effects companies in the world, uh, I did one thing, just over and over and over and over and over again. Now, uh, you get prestige out of that, you like work on like these huge, huge programs, huge projects, you work on Avengers, you work on, you know, Winter Soldier, you work on Star Wars, but your work is, you know, it's a very, very small part of the larger equation. Uh, you know, with what I'm doing now at work, like I'm building like an entire environment for an interactive experience just by myself, more or less. So it depends on what you want to do. Okay, so let's go back to my standing stones. And I'm going to go all the way up to my original stone before I do my copy to points here. So this is my, my original stone. So I'm going to V, put that in. So I'm going to remesh this bad boy. And that is way too thick. That's way too dense. Uh, let's bring this target size five. That feels pretty good. And this will this will respond to my attribute noise a little bit better than that quadded out geometry, which is nice. And then if I go here, I so I should have. Uh, there's my start, and these are all my ends. So I have this group start and end. Uh, so if I plug this in my copy to points. That will get propagated to all these guys, and then my attribute noise. Oh yeah, that looks way better. I can actually press the push this attribute noise up a little bit. So actually, now that I'm in here, I'm gonna make two attribute noises. I'm gonna make a really, really small one. And I'm gonna make a really big one. So I'll have two layers of noise on this. So I'm gonna bring this amplitude down. Just a bit. Let's see if I can get away with getting, making this even smaller with that lower amplitude. Okay, so I get like this really, really small, jaggedy amplitude, and then I'll make a bigger one. Element size. Oh no, no problem, Sonya. I'm gonna make this one 
much, much bigger. And I want to make the amplitude a lot bigger. And I want this to be uh, let's see, add, and I want this to be zero centered so they stay where they're at. All right, so that's way too much. Unless I make my, uh, my let's make this really big. Yeah, so these look super craggy now. And hopefully some of these some of these bits that kind of jut out will catch some of that some of that moss. Um Okay, so and then at the end here, like now that I have I have those two I have those two groups. So if I just really quickly put a color down here, point color. And I'm going to put that at start. I'll make this red just so we can see it. So I should see a red speck. Yeah, there we go. So there's a red speck there. Yeah, so each one of these has like this little red growth point. Now, if I let's copy this, and this is just for visualization. Let's put this to green. And let's put this to end. So this is where all my vines are going to try to grow to. So that's fantastic. Great, so let's get rid of that. All right, so now that I've edited my standing stones a bit to give them a little bit more, yeah, already that looks, they, they get a little bit more, uh, more, more flavor. Uh, I'm gonna pop into my vine curves here. So now I have those should have that start and end. So what I can do is I can just merge these guys together. Let's see, I already did that in the other one. So here, I'm gonna merge this guy and this guy. So I have start ends on both of these. And let's plug this into find shortest path. See what happens, bam, look at that, woo! Nice, nice. And this is the power of Houdini. The fact that I can like take and make these giant sweeping changes super fast is super cool. And this is all gener generated. Uh, my facet should work, my smooth should work. Uh, all that polyframe, all that attribute transfer, all that will still work as I come down here and my cost still works through here. All right, so let's go up. And my leaves even propagate. So let's see what this looks like in my render view. So we'll just grab two of these guys and say render. So I'm gonna get that ge ge uh, geometric. Um, so I'm gonna get that geometric kind of cragginess. I'm also gonna get the cragginess from my uh, uh, from my from my material, and I'm gonna get like some some vines growing up and around um, that base. Oh yeah. That's looking quite good. Quite, quite good. Um, <clears throat> so one thing I am seeing is my vines are kind of goo. Let's let that resolve a little bit more. Yeah, they, so they look like they're going through <clears throat> through the, uh, the, the displacement a little bit. So I think I want to lift those off the surface a bit more. And I think I built that, uh, I think I built that in to, uh, to the system. If I haven't, I will. So let's do that. Let's go back into our vine curves. Uh, let's see. Attribute. Yeah, I have this lift attribute. So let's do like 
sure this is working. Yeah, that seems like it's working. And this is pushing these off a little bit too much. So let's say point. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, I could just split this up and I could have my vines for my standing stones and my vines for, for my face if I wanted, if I wanted that much uh, control over it. Yeah, I think that's good. It's just giving me it's giving me enough visual interest so that so I can see what's going on. So I've, I've lifted my standing stones a little bit off the ground. Uh, I really want them to be planted into the ground with that with that uh with that noise. So let's stop this and yeah, they've lifted off the ground a little bit. So in my standing stones, let's see, I just transform. I'm just gonna drop these down a little bit seat them in the ground there we go yeah and I really really want these these guys to be on that surface so I think what I'll do I wonder if I can do a ray and a lift Yeah, let's try that. Let me save this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plaster these guys to the surface. See what my points look like. Do I have enough points to do this? Yeah, I should have enough points to do that. Uh, so I'm going to plaster these guys to the surface. Uh, and then I'll lift them back out. So uh, let's see. This is curve view. That's width. That's fine. So I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to do a ray. I'm going to ray from this merge. I'm going to say ray. So I want to ray my vines onto my merge now. Okay. Uh, so this is going crazy. So I'm going to, instead of project rays, I'm going to do minimum distance. I should. Yeah, it should just suck them down. So now there's this lift attribute. I can just grab and just push. So that allows me to do that. Eh, I don't think that's really giving me anything. We'll go back to what we had before. And let's look. Let me do, 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 do. I'm gonna template this see what this is doing so I want to use that lift attribute I built again just to see what's going on so my lift doesn't seem to be doing anything for my standing stones but it's doing something for this guy so one I think I don't think my standing stones have normals let me check Oh, they do. They do have normals. Yep, they have point normals. Do, 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 do. Yep. They have those normals. So let's look at my vines to make sure they get the normals. So let's look at vine curves. Let's see. I have this attribute transfer. I'm transferring in. Ah, okay. So, for some reason, I'm not getting my normal data transferred from my standing stones onto... Oh, that's why. Because I'm taking that straight from here. I need to take that to this guy. So now this becomes... source of truth there we go so now my lift should be able to get
There we go. Now they're lifting off the surface. Um, for books, actually not really. That's kind of the weird thing. There are really no books for for learning Houdini. Um, some of the best, one of the actually, uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you my resources for learning Houdini as soon as I get level five. Um, some of the best uh, resources for learning Houdini is one, their uh, Houdini's uh, side effects is um, Vimeo and YouTube channel, fantastic. The other one is CG Wiki by a man named Matt Estes. Um, go read the Joy of Vex on that on that site, and then go through his Houdini examples. That's what really, really, really taught me Houdini. And the the site is it looks a little antiquated, but uh, it's amazing. So C G Wiki. This was like my basically my Bible for for learning Houdini when I first started. So I started and I actually started I started with uh, the Joy of Vex and just worked my way through each one of these because really at its core that's what Houdini is. Like it's a it's a um, Houdini is an interface wrapped around this coding language called Vex. So once you once I understood this everything else everything else made, made sense. Um, and that's one of the great things about Houdini is that it has like this, it has a um, kind of singular philosophy in the way that it does things. So if you understand SOPs, you'll under, if you understand surface operators, you'll understand dynamic operators, you'll understand shading is a little bit differently, but over, overall, it's, this, it's all the same kind of idea, right? It's, it's making attributes and then have those attributes affect you know, your simulation or the position of your points or your normal maps uh, in such a way, right? So that's that's what that does. That's that's how I would suggest learning. So that's still a little bit... Just a little bit going through. Let's go back in curves. Push us a little bit more. So I'm pretty far away from these things so they can be a little bit off off the surface. Yeah, that's feeling that's feeling pretty good. So let's go back to our render view and let's look at that. Oh yeah, there it is. So now my vines are nice and they're coming all the way off. Let's look at these four. So we get. So yeah, they're just kind of creeping up, creeping up around. Cool. So let's just do a full render. See what that looks like. Um, so the head was is actually from a website called 3D Scans. Uh, just called 3D Scans. So, but it's, it's spelled out. So it's uh, three 3 dscanscom And I use this a lot. Just if I'm if I just need something, I love. I use this head for like everything. But it's got like these crazy high quality scans in it. And these things are huge. And I, so there's the head. So I grab that from here. Um, you'll see this rhino show up in a lot of things. Uh, there's uh, these dogs have showed up in a few things, um, and it's just like nice geometry to use. That's not like um, a sphere or a cube or you know the uh, the rubber toy that you see a lot. So yeah, this is this is this is a, I, this is turning out quite well. Sweet. So two custom materials in the bag. Look what we learned. Okay, so let's bring uh, let's bring our uh, short grass back. See what that looks like.
And I may even make this grass much shorter, like really, really short, um, and bring in uh, and do some like like some 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 photo, uh, some some photo based grass, just so it looks a little bit. This is this still looking pretty computery overall. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's stop this. It's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, I have my vine leaves turned on. Standing in the sun, my head, my ground. Okay, so let's uh, put some uh, some texture on our trees, and let's see if I. Did I, did I wonder if I downloaded a uh, a bark texture. If I didn't, I'll go download one. Download one now. So let's go to stream demos. Let's see what I got. Muddy ground, grass, leaves, moss, smooth cliff of a palm tree bark. It's not quite what I want though. That's not quite the bark I was looking for. So let's pop over to textures.com once again and uh, and see what we can find. that loads I'm gonna pop over and jump up into my uh, tree gen here okay, so there's there's my tree and uh, once again so I have this quick material um, on I have it on my all branches trunk, so that's all nice and already set up. Uh, I have my leaves have a quick material up here. So the quick material I use if I don't like, like this tree is come, it comes, you know, it already has UVs on it. Um, so I can use this quick material just to slap quick base color uh, uh, nor and uh, normal. And these guys are gonna be pretty far away. So I don't really want to do a, uh, a displacement texture. I just need something to break up this this trunk overall yeah I think uh, for the rhino I think they used it for the um, a lot of the karma uh, demos the the karma and uh, and lobs demos okay so let's bark and oh uh, yeah oh uh, there's lots of good stuff in here Ooh, I like this one it's kind of classic Classic tree bark. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do the 512 by 512. I'll go ahead and I'll click on 1K. So I'm gonna do, grab this one. Let's go, let's see, Spectrum. Projects, stream. Foliage demo. So there's my albedo. Normal, my roughness, height, and occlusion. So generally, as I'm working on this type of stuff, I keep I keep all this stuff. I just have a folder like as I download stuff and as I keep it, I keep it because I'm you're always gonna have to use. Some sort of like, especially if you're doing, uh, if you're doing, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're doing environments, you're always going to need a good tree bark uh, texture set. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my base color and I'm going to take that tint to one, uh, so it's just white because this will multiply against my base color. So I'm going to grab that tree bark that I just grabbed. So many textures. I should probably put these in their own folder. Uh, let's see. Cracked muddy, grass strand, leaves, 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 leaves. Leaves tropic. Tree bark. There we go. Tree bark. Albedo. Accept. Um, 
Um, so it's my albedo here. Uh, let's see, normal. Tree bark. Normal. And tree bark roughness. Oh, and the reason I'm losing that is because I've packed it. So if I look here, should see see that come out. Yeah, so there's my bark texture on this. And this is the cool thing about the tree generator is that it makes these UVs, it makes these really handy UVs for you. So... Veto isn't coming through. Let's go look at what that is, what that looks like. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Should be coming through. Yeah, yeah, should be okay. So I'll just make this white again. Don't know why that albedo isn't coming through, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out. And let's see, that's my gin. I want to turn on my trees. Oh God, I'm quite literally lost in the woods. <laughs> All right, so some of these are turning to boxes because it's it's trying to uh, it's trying to keep my viewport speedy, but trust me, they're still there. So let's go and take a look at our render view. Let's render that one more time and see what that looks like with that uh, that texture on it. So the leaves are already textured. Uh, I just threw a bark texture on there. Oh yeah, that's already looking better with that. Uh, just a little bit of breakup goes a long way. Just a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of natural, like kind of like photoness goes a really, really long way. I think I'm gonna turn off progressive and just let this thing run. Yeah, this is looking, I'm really enjoying this. So overall, like I have my structure. Um, now looking at this, kind of taking a step back, uh, I feel like my, um, let's see, I feel like because these 
like because my grass is so dark, I feel like my leaves are a little bit too saturated. I can I can fix that later. But it's always good to just take a step back and you know just just look at what you've been doing because you're like it's it's sometimes you can get you can't see the forest through the trees or as they say um sometimes just take a look just like let it sit let it marinate and just look at it and just be like okay what what's going on with this i'm gonna scoot this over so you guys can see the whole thing I'll just let this let this run and let's see how I feel about it as it as it comes in as it as it resolves. I also love this little feature. If you start clicking, it'll start to focus kind of rays and, and sampling in the place where you click. So you can kind of get the pot get the spots that you want to be important, and then it'll kind of resolve everything else on its own. I feel like I, I want, looking at this, like this, the head here is so, so dense with leaves and my standing stones are just like, meh, like just have like a little bit, little bit on them. So I may, I think I might try to remesh these again. I'm really liking this moss on the top of these. It's really working quite well. Yeah, so let's stop this. I like this. I like where this is going. I really like where this is going. Okay, so uh, now that that's done, we're gonna save. <laughs> save. Um, so let's see. Well, let's, what can we do now? Let's um, let's let's deal with this grass because I really, I still really don't like uh, this grass. I think it's okay for like small things. I still think it's a little bit too thick, um, and it's a little bit too uh, CG looking. So let's build. I think I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna build some photographs. Some grass from photographs. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. So this is going to be short grass, tall grass. Let's go ahead and turn that tall grass on and see what it looks like. See if that's adding. I don't think it's going to add much. just so I can get a get an idea of what's going on quickly well maybe that adds a little bit adds a little bit of variety this guy's like right front and center uh, so I think yeah it adds a little bit it adds a little bit it, it feels they feel a little bit too much they'll feel a little bit too uh, it's feeling a little too overgrown now like these things are huge So, yeah, let's go back to our scene view. And I think I'll just have less tall grass overall. Like, I feel like it's, and let's, uh, Yeah, so there's just, I feel like there's just too many of them, and uh, they're too kind of scattered. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go in. I think I'm just gonna like kind of. I don't kind of. I want them in like little bunches. 
right? Like, I want them, like, that's, and, like, that's how kind of, like, things grow. Like, a bunch of the same thing kind of grow together. So, let's go to our tall grass and start to work on that. So, right now, uh, let's see, I have this line. So, let's build in tall grass. And then, uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's building the original stalk. This is, I'm pretty sure this is my ground. That's my ground there. And my attribute create is, oh, this is my attribute delete. And then I'm doing a scatter over all here. And I'm doing an orient and, and attribute noise for P scale. So first of all, I think they're too big overall. So I'm gonna take my P scale down a little bit. So it was at three, I'm gonna take it down at two. And like I said, I want these to kind of bunch around where, uh, where, um, where my objects are. And then I also want them to bunch, I'll just paint in kind of some spots. So I'm gonna bring in my standing stones and that headpiece again. And if it seems like I'm just wigging it, I am. <laughs> I totally am. I'm totally just winging it. Uh, so I'm going to do, so I'm going to have these both be the same thing. Let's see, standing stones. All right. So I'm going to do that same kind of, you know, system that I, that I did before. So let's see, attribute delete, make orient. So after the scatter, here we go. So before the scatter, I want to make a density attribute. So I have my ground, so I'm gonna take and let's do let's do this with color because I like to do it with color. So bah, 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 let's do the same setup as we did for our, our grass. And actually, I can just go steal that setup for the short grass. Ooh, wait, uh, short grass. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, Head, standing stones, mass from geometry, modify density. Cool, I can just, I'll just grab this, right? This is my, this has my density overall, right? I have more dense stuff in here. density ah here is where I'm building this fit yeah I'll just use this so I have this density attribute um, here I think I'm what's calling it mask no, no. Yeah, I have a density attribute here. So I'm gonna call this let me kind of null here. Let's say out ground with density. So over my tall grass, instead of just going to grab that ground, I'm gonna go into my, uh, let's see, my short grass here, and I'm gonna grab that out ground with density. So this should now have a density attribute. I'm getting rid of my CD here, and let's see what the scatter does now. I need to tell the scatter to look for Yeah, so you can kind of see it. That's without density, that's with density. So it's, it's kind of starting to bunch in around those spots. So what I want to do is I'm going to modify that density even, even more. So let's see, it's density, okay. So I want to cut out my really, really low values. Um, and actually, I'm gonna move. 
I'll move this guy up to before I add. You know, that's not really doing it for me either, to be completely honest. So I'll do it from scratch. Let's do it from scratch. So I'm gonna go back to grabbing my ground, accept, and I'm gonna do same thing here. So this is my ground. This is my, these are my stony bits here. And I'm gonna do a mask from object. Mass from geometry. So grab this guy and this guy. Show that mask. And I want to invert this. So that's that's my overall mask. So what I want is I want to do what's called a solarization. So I want a peak in the middle and I want nothing on the outside. That allows me to just get, so it's like inside gets high. I can actually pull that back even more. Yeah, that works. I like that. So I'll get just those, those tall, tall pieces along there. Uh, I'll cast. I'm just going to call this density. Cool. So I'll plug that into. Make sure I spell that correctly. I'm the worst speller on the planet. It's really embarrassing. But I'm really good at math. So. Awesome. So that seems that's going to be a, a way too many. Let's bring this down just to a few. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, where was I controlling my? scale yeah so let's see this in context yeah so now they have an alley to them they're like kind of growing around these things I can probably bring down that radius a bit kind of tuck them in a little bit closer Yeah, so I like this like little bundle, these little bundles that they're making around these guys. That's working pretty well. Just a little bit of variation. All right, John. Thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for stopping by. We'll keep working on this until I get tired of it and start want working on something else. Um, yeah, so uh, it, at this point, it's just kind of like me fiddling. You get to this point where it's just like, okay, you got all those... Ah, uh, smooth cliff. Normal. Tiff. What's looking at that? Okay. Uh, I'll figure that out. It is... I know there's like the little bundle right there. I just want to see what that guy's doing. So 
though. They're kind of getting lost in that taller grass. So uh, I think I'm going to do what I said. Uh... Oh, thanks you, thanks, thanks to you, Sun Yu, as well. Thank you for thank you for watching. Uh, so these guys are now kind of starting to get lost in uh, in this tall grass or like the short grass. So I'm going to make the short grass even shorter. So now I'm just fine tuning, just fine tuning, as it were. So short grass, short grass. So I don't need that anymore. Not using it. And let's go back to my scene view. So let's take that short grass and let's take the piece scale. Let's bring that all the way down. Something really short. So now I have like those clumps of hopefully taller grass. Let's go to point one. And let's bring our scatter up as well. Let's go, let's double this. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand blades of grass. And let's see. What else can I do? What else can I do? P scale. Drop my element size a little bit. A little bit thinner blades of grass overall. I'm gonna go back to my tall grass and make that quite tall. Now there's less of them and they're kind of bunched together. start to make this amplitude uh, so yeah they're starting to kind of chill out now there I don't think that warp is doing anything for me just kind of complicating things bunch of like really small ones and some really big ones. Yeah. So I'm like able to like kind of like sculpt the parts that I really like and I really want. Uh, did I pack these? Uh, let's see. I did pack an instance though. It's great. Okay. Let's go back to our render view and let's do a full render and see what I got because I'm starting to run out of time. Actually, I'm just going to do a full render. Let this look. Let's see what this looks like. So I may actually go in and replace those quick materials with just like a simple uh, a, um, uh, principal shader in the actual um, material context because I, I can get more control over them. And uh, yeah, or I might just build custom shaders for everything. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Progressive. So, let's see. As this as this kind of resolves, let's. I'm going to talk about next steps. So, next steps is I want to get some atmospherics in here. I want to get some fog 
in here for sure. I don't know if I want to do that in comp or if I want to do that in, uh, in just with actual volumetric fog. Uh, I feel like I'm going to need to do some post-production on this. Uh, I, w I definitely want some depth of field in here. I want, uh, basically, I want this, this line here to be in focus. I want my trees to be a little out of focus, and I want uh, uh, this 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 kind of front line here to be uh, out of focus. Uh, the other thing I kind of want is I want some framing, so I might do some uh, uh, might do some uh, some framing, like just maybe put some leaves or something on these corners to frame this up, or I might just leave it open. Some other things that I might think about doing is, ooh, what I really want to do is put some fireflies in here. I want just like some little fireflies kind of skirting around and kind of flying around and making that little little firefly trail with like the hot, uh, like yellowish green, um, yellowish green look uh, flying above above here. So that I want to do, definitely want to do with geometry. That'll be really fun to do. So I can do possibly a, uh, uh, you know, a noise field and then have some points and infect those points by, by that noise field to make like the little firefly, uh, firefly, uh, um, trails. And then I can have those kind of glow in the mist. I think that'll be cool. And then I like maybe have like a, like a light coming from here with some, like some God rays. Yeah, I think that'll be cool. So uh, the other thing I would like to have a few more standing stones, so that kind of cl closer to this guy. Like I feel like this is actually no, that might that might be cool. And then the other thing is I need to have something that's going to fill in this background. So what I think I'm going to do is I will bake one of these trees uh, onto a texture card that'll have like the normal and uh, an opacity and the color and stuff baked into it and I'll just place those cards back here because by the time you get way, way back here, I just need the hint of trees. I don't actually need trees. So I'm just gonna put place those on maybe curved cards that are curved this way or forward, probably backwards, just so they have a little bit of dimensionality to them. But uh, that, then I can place as many of those as I want in the background to kind of fill in that in. That's like, I'm kind of like a matte painting back there. So that, that'll be cool. Um, this is looking pretty good. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Uh, yeah, I also feel like these leaves are just really, really bright. Really bright. So, actually, uh, let's see. If I go to my tree gen, I look at my leaves and see what I'm using. I'm using the Ivy Albedo. So if these are too bright, I think what I can do is just tint them down a little bit. So if I look at my Ivy Albedo, I don't know why I keep closing this window. I keep on going back to this. Uh, projects, stream, foliage demos, Let's see, that's ivy, and I'm using. I also realize that I'm using the ivy leaf for like these these oak trees, but it's so small it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see, uh, where is my? What am I using? Ivy. This is brilliant. It's really, really bright. So let's take this down to like, like point eight. Yeah, that brought them down quite a bit. A little bit too much, maybe like 0.5. It's a little bit too much, 0.75. Uh, and let's say, let's say 0.6. 
right? And so, and this is this is where color theory comes in really amazingly, right? These guys are green, so they're about here. So if I add a little bit of magenta across here, it's going to take this green, it's going to pull it across this line, so it's going to desaturate them a little bit. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to desaturate. If I put in a little bit of magenta, it should pull out some of that color just to kind of give it, just kind of pull out some of that green. Don't know why that did that. So I don't have to go too far. Yeah, so just pulling that saturation out just a little bit. Yeah, that looks way more natural. That's feeling way more natural. So it's a little bit darker, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more magenta to pull out some of that super, super green, that super bright green look overall. Maybe I've made them a little bit too dark. So let's try 0.7 again. And I may, you know, I'm thinking about it, I might put do a, um, so the, really there's no translucency to these guys or subsurface to these guys. Um, I may try to do like maybe like a, uh, like a translucent type shader to uh, kind of give these, let the light come through these a little bit more. I don't nighttime scene. I think I want it to be like dusk maybe. Um, that's always fun to, fun to do. Yeah, that's, that's feeling way better. It's not feeling so cartoony anymore. So I'll probably do that to, to these, these, these guys as well. Just add a little bit of tint, like bring down that intensity and add a little bit of magenta in to kind of pull out some of that super, super, uh, super bright green color to everything. So a little bit of color theory goes a long way. So pay attention in, in art class. Let's do a full refresh. What I'm going to do actually is so it looks like my Houdini session is just about at its limit. Uh, I'm going to wait for this to kind of respond. Yeah, I'm going to save and we're going to call this a day. So I'm going to let this render overnight and see what it looks like in the morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you all of you for coming to see me. Um, this is turning out absolutely fantastic. I really didn't know where I wanted this to go when I first started. Um, it's turning out really, really well. I'm having a good time. I'm learning a lot. Hopefully you're learning a lot. You're seeing the process of just kind of like working through problems. Like it's like, oh, okay, I can't figure out this. So I go look it up and then I'll share it with you. Um, so feel free to uh, hit me on email. For all your modeling needs, go to cgspectrum.com slash 3D dash modeling. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, as always, eat your vegetables, Drink water, get enough rest, don't be too hard on yourself because there's enough of the people in the world that will do that for you. So I will see you next week in the modeling stream. Have a good night.
Peace.